Well, yes, it's that time of the week. It is my Sunday sermon, and I'm going to be identifying slightly differently today. Yes, I think I might identify as... because I think there's a vacancy for the Archbishop of Canterbury. So I might identify as said Archbishop just for this sermon. Why? Because you, well, you may not be aware there's a vacancy. It hasn't really been announced, but it seems to me that Archbishop Justin Welby is in danger of taking leave. He's going AWOL from his job as the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's taken absence from the Christian religion because he seems to want to be the Archbishop of three other religions. Yes, indeed, he's, he's abandoned his Christian flock. I mean, he abandoned us during the Covid process. He abandoned his flock when he should have been campaigning for the government to keep churches open, for his congregations to be able to meet and gain solace and comfort and support from their leaders, from vicars, from their bishops and archbishops. No, he abandoned all that. No representations whatsoever. Where was he campaigning for compassion in care homes, for loved ones to see and to say goodbye to their loved ones in care homes? Where was the archbishop? campaigning for us to be able to attend funerals of our parents and our loved ones. He was completely absent without leave during the Covid process. And I think he's still absent without leave. And to use a cricketing analogy which seems appropriate in the middle of a crucial game on the ashes, it seems to me what the Church of England needs is its own form of Ben Stokes at the crease of the Church of Christianity, standing up, rock solid, firm, against all things incoming, particularly the Aussies. Instead, at the first sign of trouble, this Archbishop legged it. He legged it to Square La Gumpa, nowhere to be seen, like a rat leaving a sinking ship. You see, instead what he's doing, he's pursuing these three new religions. Firstly, He's pursuing the cult of the eco-warriors. Those people who are wetting themselves over the pagan god of climate change. He seems happy to sacrifice those, the vulnerable, the poorest in society, the oldest, the disadvantaged. He's happy to sacrifice those on the altar of net zero, like sacrificial lambs. The fact they can't afford to keep themselves warm, can't afford the heating, which means that old, cold people sadly die early. The Archbishop doesn't seem to care about that. Where's his sense of Christian kindness and compassion? Where's his campaigning on that issue? When he actually, what he's doing is campaigning for the opposite. He's campaigning for the eco-cult. That's the first new religion that he's backing. The second new religion that the Archbishop of Gender Ideology is pursuing. This is his second one. It's this, this group of activist trans warriors, this bunch of gender ideologues, who are actively seeking to change the way that our children think in schools, the way they view themselves. They actively encourage confusion. They encourage anxiety. They encourage gender questioning. And yes, Justin Welby, in his role as Archbishop of Gender Ideology, he seems to be happy with this. In fact, he's happy to cancel anyone who questions this cult ideology. You see, there's 4,700 Church of England primary schools up and down the country. And in those schools now, pupils are being encouraged to look at their own gender identity, their own sexual orientation. And the schools have to provide curriculum opportunities. And it says here, where differences are explored, same-sex relationships and same-sex parenting and transgender issues may be mentioned as a fact, a fact in people's lives. And I would suggest to you that instead, actually what the Church of England is doing in their primary schools, it is abandoning Bible-believing Christianity and their children on the altar of transgender affirmation, led by the Archbishop of Trans 
ideology, this trans cult. They're literally allowing the persecution of those Christian families who believe in two sexes and two genders. And by the way, to be absolutely clear, that is the fact, and that's what I believe it. Where's Justin Welby's sense of Christian kindness and compassion to children and their parents who believe in the teaching of the Bible on this sort of issue? I don't know, but it seems again, absent without leave. 4,700 primary schools teaching this nonsense. So that's the second religion that he seems to be pursuing. And the third new religion that the Archbishop is sort of leading now is the religion of open borders, unlimited immigration, whether it's lawful or unlawful. The cult of illegal immigration, of course, that encourages the vile people smugglers to profit by putting people's lives in danger. Where's his kindness and compassion in trying to stop people losing their lives? Why isn't he saying, stop the boats leaving France? No, no, he's saying the opposite. He speaks against the government's idea of the Rwanda plan, whether you think it might work or not. The fact, the very fact that the courts have ruled against the Rwanda plan, the very fact that the Archbishop for Unlimited Illegal Immigration stood up in the House of Lords against the Illegal Migration Bill of the governments, that has an anti-deterrent effect. Can't you see that, Justin? Can't you see that what you should be doing is saying, please, President Macron, stop all the boats coming. That's the kind and compassionate thing to do. Instead, he's campaigning for the opposite. It's quite extraordinary. People abusing our hospitality and our generosity. And the Archbishop is with them. I mean, he's even against the scheme to put the illegals onto a barge. And this is a barge that I remind everybody is previously used to house British construction workers on offshore projects, be they wind turbines or whatever. Well, if it's good enough for a British construction worker, I'm pretty sure, folks, it's good enough for an illegal migrant, but not according to the Archbishop Justin of... Uh, the Archbishop for Open Borders and Unlimited Immigration. I'm, I'm almost confused by what he's Archbishop of at the moment. Quite extraordinary. And if that wasn't enough, I mean, where was his campaigning for the... Where's his campaigning for the construction workers? For their conditions on this barge? I don't remember that, do you? And if he's not busy enough being Archbishop of these three new religions, I've got more news for you. If you want to listen to Radio 4 today at 1.30, then you'll hear him interviewing. He's got a new series. He's interviewing important, high-profile people. And he's chosen today, incredibly, someone who was a complete failure. Yes, the former Met Police Commissioner, one Cressida Dick, who was fired from a job about the only sensible thing Sadiq Khan's done. But the Archbishop sees fit to try to learn lessons in his interview on Radio 4 at 1.30. I mean, where does he get time to give sermons like this? Where does he get time to be the Archbishop of Canterbury for the Church of England? He's got three new religions that he's Archbishop of, and he's now a radio presenter. It's quite extraordinary. Where's his campaigning and compassion for the good Christians of the United Kingdom? That's what I want to know. Where's his campaigning and compassion for the victims of the vile drug dealers, the drugs trade, that has been taken over by the Albanian criminal gangs, many of whom have come over on the boats? Hmm? Where's your compassion and kindness, Archbishop, for those British citizens? For the towns and cities where street after street is being blighted with no-go zones. I don't hear you talking about that very much. Unbelievable. It seems that he's forgotten his compassion and kindness campaigning for the vulnerable of, in Britain, 
for Christians, for his original job, because he's so busy with his three new religions. So you can see how I think there's a vacancy for the Archbishop of Canterbury, because he's off doing other things. Where does he get the time? He cannot be doing a proper job as the Archbishop of Canterbury for the Church of England if he's off doing these three other religions. He's so busy playing politics, he's got no proper time to invest in his own flock. Is it a coincidence that the number of people attending churches up and down the country is plummeting, declining rapidly, fast? I suggest to you that's because of a complete woeful failure of leadership. Because the congregations of other faiths, other religions, other churches is very often increasing. If it's well run, if it's motivational, if it's well led, if it's exciting, if it stimulates you for the week ahead. But we're not getting much stimulation from the Archbishop of Wokeby, are we? Unless you're a member of those three new religions. But I shall be talking later why I think one of those religions, the religion of climate change and net zero, we may be at peak membership, peak madness. But can I make a suggestion, Justin Welby? Could you focus on what is supposed to be your proper day job? Focus on the Church of England, on Christianity. Focus on getting your own congregations back. Focus on the vulnerable, the least well off, the needy here in the United Kingdom. And abandon these three other religions that you seem so focused on. And I think you may find you're in a better place. And with that, this Sunday morning, here endeth my Sunday sermon.